Hey, what's up? I'm Ofosu Jones Corte. And I'm Leia Santa Cruz. And we are the Meditation Coaches on the Balance app. And this is our weekly show, Well Balanced, where we explore ways to live a healthier and happier life. Yes, it is. So, Leia, you were telling me that you want to talk a little bit about spending time with family, especially since holiday season is rapidly ramping up. So fill us in. What is going on? Yeah. So I've spent a lot of time with family in the last few weeks. Uh, I've had a number of guests coming through my home over the last month, and I was in the States for Thanksgiving. And I mean, I love I love being around friends and family, but it's sometimes hard for me to spend all that time always around people like back to back without a break. Yeah. I definitely need my alone me time, my hermit time. Uh, and I find it tough to avoid getting a little sensitive or maybe a bit snappy around the people that I care about if I haven't taken that time. I don't know if you can relate to that. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely can. But for me, I tend to not check in with what my needs are once things are going. And I find that I will spread myself too thin and just mm. give myself over to every conversation, every person, every, 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 without like realizing that, okay, it's time for me to just pause and step away. So by the end, I usually feel, I probably need like two days to recover because I've just <laughs> overexerted myself socially. So I thought it'd be cool to just have a conversation about this because I feel like people probably can relate. And we've got a huge friend of the show, our buddy Todd Cashin here to help us work through this. Todd is a professor of psychology at George Mason University. Mm -hmm. And he's a leading expert on well-being and the author of The Art of Insubordination, How to Dissent and Defy Effectively. What up, Todd? Hey, good to be back here. <laughs> Always fun to have you back. Yeah. Really excited to chat with you about this because I think it's probably not something that just Afosu and I struggle with. Um, <laughs> and we immediately thought of you when we got into working into like tough conversations and maybe even tense times with family over the holidays. So for me, I, I think it, the question comes down to how do I best recognize when I need space before I'm actually overwhelmed? Mm -hmm. And maybe even a second part of this question is like, how do I then ask for that space without offending another or making them feel like a burden or feel bad, you know, especially if they're a guest in my home. Yeah. I, I love that you're both talking about having this introverted hermit time. Um, it's like, it's like this playful relationship with this part of your identity. So I think there's a beauty in having this playful way of describing of like, Hey, listen, you know, I love being with you. That's why I'm traveling X number of miles to see you. But you also know that I need my hermit time, which I love that phrase. And by the way, weirdly, I use it as well. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we know from science, from pretty much from Vanessa Bonds at Cornell University, is that we have more influence than we think. When you make this request of, I'm going to potentially say that I'm going to need a moment away from the social world, we, we underestimate how many people are going to comply with that than they actually mm -hmm. do. So mm -hmm. it's important to know the typical response is that people are going to say, oh my God, of course, Leia, like definitely. And even more typical than that is the add-on of thank you for opening up the portal because I had a similar thought and I wondered, knowing that we're going to be spending eight hours together, what was I going to do? So not only are you doing a favor to yourself, mm -hmm. but you making a request in a playful, compassionate way, you're opening the portal for other people to engage in self-care as well. Yeah, so it's really just coming down to like asking for it in advance. Yeah, so not waiting for the moment when you sort of lose your marbles, um, but also look at it in the bin of kindness as opposed to being in the bin of being assertive. Yeah, I feel like when I get into new social situations, unless I'm hosting, it actually takes me a while to be able to engage and i feel like really bad about that because like i feel like i'm being standoffish or that i'm just like all right let me just get in this introverted like hermit time right now because i know when i turn the switch on i'm just i'm not going to be conscious of 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 needing to turn it back off 
So we so we've got like communicating that hey I might need to do this, mm-hmm. or, or, or is that it? Or do you get are you giving yourself space by communicating it from the front? So um, I, I love the way you're phrasing this, and it reminds me of a, de- a de- way that I describe myself sometimes in large dinner situations. It's the one place where I'm very introverted. Large dinners, no music in the background. I become socially anxious, introverted Todd, and I know that. Um, so one thing that I'll often tell people is, is that at dinners, I often have a long runway before I become my socially effervescent, gregarious self and just be prepared for that. And so the reason that I bring up this example is that not only am I describing myself with very nuanced details so that people get to know me, I'm also giving people a language to think about, huh? Do I need a short runway or a long runway for myself? And all of a sudden, people are describing, you know, details about how they socialize, and people love talking about themselves. And so, mm-hmm. it's good to imagine is that when you make this disclosure about a need that you feel that is necessary for you to function well in your family or social gatherings, you're also opening up an intimate conversation and people really crave Mm. deep conversations as opposed to shallow conversations. Mm. Nobody wants to talk about the weather. Nobody wants to talk about LSU, like how their football team is doing, (laughs) um, unless you're like in a fantasy football pool. Most people want to talk about the big stuff yeah. And everyone's waiting for who's going to skip the rungs of intimacy and bring up that conversation. So again, it's yeah. it's a gift you're giving to yourself and it plays off as a gift for other people. Wow. It makes me think about being around certain family members uh, who I love them dearly. And yet we might have, we have different, you know, views about the world, like, politically or um spiritually religious views and uh mm-hmm. and just c- kind of going into those conversations preparing myself to go okay what do i do when this topic comes up so that it doesn't get into this like tension or disagreement um not that i want to avoid all te- you know sometimes tension's good a little bit uh conflict is good but but to just keep the peace so to say um or if I'm in that conversation already, like, I'm just wondering if you can kind of help, like, how would you approach that? Yeah, I, I love what you're bringing up because I think most people that are listening or watching are actually experiencing something very similar. Yeah. There's always one family member that knows how to trigger you and it's got <laughs> has so many years of background that, you know, you need to be on the couch for five years with a psychoanalyst to deal with it. So here's two <laughs> strategies right off the bat. And it's got some some work from Julia Minson. Mm. It's based on her stuff. One is what I call the discomfort caveat. And that is before you open up the portal to a difficult conversation, just verbalize as a meta comment what you're experiencing. Listen, lay it. This kind of makes me uncomfortable um, because I'm not usually talking about how difficult it is to talk about politics with someone who disagrees with me. Um, So I'm hesitant to even say anything. Mm. And you say this slowly as a precursor to whatever you're going to say. And the goal is simple. One, as you're saying, I'm being very authentic and describing what emotions I'm feeling right now. Even if they're low grade, I'm going to make them sound a little bit bigger. The second one is, imagine being on the receiving end of that, is you're like, oh my God, I don't want to make you uncomfortable. And then people's defenses just Mm. slowly dissipate and come down. And also, you're basically offering a, a tantalizing teaser to whatever you're going to say next. So now you have their full undivided attention. You've just said, despite the fact that I'm nervous, I want to have this conversation. Yeah. Deliberate pause. I'm just curious, knowing that we disagree on this, hey, how did you reach this opinion in the first place? Mm -hmm. And you can see from the inflection in my voice is the key to this. To ask this curious question, this open-ended question, it has to come from a place of curiosity. Because I can ask the same question. How did you end up thinking that way? It doesn't gel with how I see the world. So now I'm actually going on the offense as opposed to I'm open and exploratory. And whatever they say about keeping the peace, people just want to... People just want to voice what their belief systems are, what Mm -hmm. their attitudes are. You don't have to disagree with them. You don't have to agree with them. And by you being responsive and opening up that conversation, you are not committed 
to going any further in that conversation mm -hmm. or changing your view. And possibly even learning something. I think it's always important that we learn from people that uh, have different points of view, but I really appreciate the way that you framed that. I mean, you're you're doing people a service right now, Todd, by just by dropping these jewels here. How can people like continue to develop their own like social toolkit? Because like down to you talking about like how to deliver certain inflections and stuff like that, it seems like I'm like, oh man, I just need Coach Todd to just to, I'm gonna just call you <laughs> up before. Piece. <laughs> Before I got anything important to talk or talk to somebody about and just be like, all right, Todd, walk me through it. How am I supposed to handle this? So like for the listener who doesn't have an everyday Todd Cashton, how can they like, yeah, what are your suggestions for how they can resource themselves ahead of time? Really, the arsenal that you have is you, we live in a world of you've got you've got books, you have YouTube videos, yeah. you have podcasts. There's so much content on this. I mean, this is why I spend my time writing books is so that I can get the the mentorship I wish I had when mm. I was a 20 year old at social gatherings yeah. and just watching people argue and being like, I don't know what to do in this situation. All I know is I'm just counting the hours before I get the, the get out of jail free car to go hang out with my friends. <laughs> I, I think, um, you know, one of the important things is really anticipating all the difficulties that arise. And there's a term for this. So we really, in American society, we really put on a pedestal optimists, people that have expect good things to happen and they're responsible for it. And there's this really cool body of work about defensive pessimists. This might be one of one or both of you and definitely people listening, is you hope for the best, but you're bracing for the worst. Mm. And anxiety is not something to get rid of. It's basically, it is your problem solving fuel. It mm. goes into the engine. It's like, okay, threats are gonna come. People are gonna be annoying. Conversations are gonna be stifled. Uh, people are gonna raise their voices. I'm highly sensitive to people saying they dislike each other. And you think about all the things that could go wrong. You brace yourself and think of, okay, what is going to be my preemptive strategies walking into that scenario? And so you don't want to wait until you're in the scenario. You want to just be imagining, okay, like Uncle Joe is going to turn the channel to one of those very politicized TV stations <laughs> and they're going to sit in front of that couch and they are not getting rid of that remote. So when you anticipate this happening, you start to imagine like, okay, what are the ways that I can sit in that room being that everyone's going to say, get out of the kitchen because we're cooking in the other room. <laughs> what could you say to him? How could you shift away from the TV? Can you go outside in the backyard? Is there a safe person that you know is a regular, consistent source of joy that you can be one-on-one -on -one with despite being in a group? So you started to kind of develop these preemptive strategies, and then eventually they become natural habitual, quick tools that you activate automatically. Mm. This reminds me of pre-visualization, which is a, a term Ansel Adams came up with, but we use it in meditation a lot. And you picture yourself, you know, choreographing your future moves in the way that you hope and intend for them to take place. So, you know, imagining like you're, like you said, your uncle flipping it to that station or something and imagining what you're going to do in those scenarios. I think that we could, we could even turn that into a meditative practice before we, before we head over to someone's house or have guests over for the holidays. The beauty of bringing that up is it's important to realize you're trying to connect with people at like, at, you know, at a heart level. I mean, that's what we're doing. What That's why our families get together. And so mm. whichever way it works, just know is that these strategies, they're time tested. They're like 2000 years old back to ancient <laughs> Rome and Greece. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It feels like, you know, that the, the old adages are true that, you know, what we can control is just basically our own behavior and, and our own communication, letting people know what it is that we're feeling and what we're needing. And, um, and then, you know, all we can experience is our own feelings also. So it's, a, it's, it seems like a pretty internal process that we can communicate and share to whatever degree we feel comfortable with. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I appreciate this really, you know, as we continue to go into the holidays, I'm thinking of, uh, I'm, I'm fortunate that I, well, you know, who knows what the future is going to hold in traditionally, I haven't had too many holiday issues, but um, you never know. So yeah, I think I'm resonating with you, Fosuna. I think some of the things I'm taking away from this is like we just gotta 
recognize up front that we're moving into scenarios that despite our best attempts to give all the energy possible that we might need to take time for ourselves so we could just prepare for that and communicate it with others. And then just not necessarily, um, you know, blaming other people for how we feel, but mm. but really just looking deep within ourselves and saying, okay, you know, this is just something I need for me and, and giving ourselves that permission. Yeah, I, I just feel like I... I just got a lot of permission from this conversation and I hope whoever's listening is getting permission too. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you used that phrase. Actually, I like the idea of, of like permission to actually also, even to go one level further is permission to have someone actually move you emotionally in a way you didn't want to. And you notice that and be like, well, damn, I don't want to be here, but now mm-hmm. I'm going to play with it. I'm going to name it. I'm going to normalize it. And I'm going to work with it. And I'm going to give myself time or do whatever activity is necessary for me to get to a place of balance, equanimity, tranquility, you know, choose your favorite calm emotion. And curiosity. Mm, mm. Okay, Todd, last question. What is giving you life right now? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, <laughs> I'm going. I'm going to say is that um, in the winter time, as we go into kind of like hibernation season, this is time where I like to spend lots of physical proximity to people that I care about. Mm-hmm. So there's there's something about like uh, just just like bears in a cave. So whether it's with my kids, I already I'm already imagining like being on the floor, whether we're drawing together or like writing things. Um, you know, we're working on a children's book together, or mm-hmm. if it's like loved ones that kind of like I have more physical contact with as well. It's just kind of like googly eyes and just kind of just making cooing sounds to make each other crack up, and you can see the crinkles in their nose <laughs> as they snort and chortle like an extra from Three's Company. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much, Todd, for your time. We really enjoyed having you. <laughs> Let's talk again soon. And can you remind us where people can check out more of your stuff? Yeah, the uh, the new book sitting there behind me is The Art of Insubordination, How to Dissent and Defy Effectively. And that's really the operator's manual for uh, how to be influential in a very difficult, challenging social world. If you like what Todd has to say as much as we do, we've got a link to his book in the show description. Mm-hmm. And thank you, Todd, so much for coming and hanging out with us. We really appreciate you. I always respond to the meditative bat call from the two of you. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, for all y'all out there, it's almost the start of the new year and we love, love hearing from you. So we want some help from y'all to kick things off right. What we're asking y'all to do is to pick out one word that you want that represents your intention for 2023. So this is a word that represents something you want to invite into your life, something you want to bring to life in the new year. And leave us a voice message telling us the word and why you picked it. So head over to slash wellbalanced to record your message and you might hear your word of the year in our first episode of 2023. We've got a link for y'all in the show notes. And uh, if you're not watching this podcast yet, please check us out on YouTube. Our channel is called Balance. And we've got a link to today's episode in the show notes. But if you're on Spotify, you can also see our video when you're playing this episode in the app. Yes, you can. And please do rate and review the show whenever you're watching or listening. We love hearing from you and it really helps us to spread the word also. And we're going to be back again next week. But until then, have a beautiful week and take some me time. (laughs) Don't forget to be kind to yourself. Happy holidays and see you soon. Peace.